the magnificent Lisa Pressman is here. Hi, I'm Lisa Pressman. Lisa Pressman is one of my favorite artists. Smart, funny, and very, very talented. Her new show at Rosenfeld's is quite different from her previous one back in January of 2011. I tried to get to the bottom of these changes. Lisa, I see a new direction in your work. Well, since the last time you saw me, I focused in and let some of the imagery that I've usually covered up come out. Well, you were totally abstract your last show. If you remember last time, there were a couple of paintings that had inklings of a box or something in it. I just decided to stop covering over things and letting images emerge. And rather than just painting them over and over and over, I'm just letting them breathe and then making decisions based on what I see. What do these images relate to? There's a feeling of an inside and an outside. Some of them feel like bags of some kind, of containment, of vessels, windows. When I photograph, I take pictures of windows and light, inside light and outside light, so I think that has affected the way that I've done this, the composition in the work. Even if it alludes to something, it still has that, are you looking inside or outside? Again, based on the idea of a window. There's funny things coming up in the work. For instance, this painting, Shifting Light. I made the painting and a friend of mine sent me an image of Soutine's meat. And I almost fell off my chair because if you look at the image, this painting is so connected to it, but I, I was not aware of that particular painting. People have said they look like chairs, or handbags, or pocketbooks, or female body parts. However people see it is fine. Um, actually, this painting reminds me of those pods that you see on the beach. Skate pods. Yep, and I did it before I was at the beach. But I saw them on the beach the other day, and I was like, there you go. Talking about where paintings come from, Tuscan Wall, which is not part of this series. It was done a little bit earlier. But it was a painting that had been out traveling, and I decided to scrape it down. I started working on it. All of a sudden, I remembered it reminded me of something. And I went into my photographs of when I was in Italy. It is from the picture I took of a Tuscan Wall. I didn't paint the painting from the photograph. The imagery came in and came out in the painting. Interesting. The textures are remarkable. Well, the surface of these paintings, most of them are oil paint with cold wax. Cold wax is a medium that's been around for a really, really long time. In fact, I used it in graduate school. It's beeswax with Demar varnish or linseed oil. It is something you do not heat up. It helps you to create layers, it gives it a little bit of a matte finish, and also an impasto feel to it, and lets the paint dry a little quicker. Using cold wax really sets up a textural surface where you can lay things in, pull things out. I think the surfaces are really, really rich and luminescent. I've stopped using brushes mostly. In the studio, it's about moving the paint any way other than using a brush. I'm using rollers, brayers, scrapers, and the oil pigment sticks are really rich and luscious. They transfer beautifully. Doing a lot of mono printing, indirect, offset, I'll draw on paper and then I'll print it on something else and then take that and put it on the painting. You'll see little specks of color in the work. It's from prints. I'll walk around with a piece of paper and go, oh, I need a little blue here, and I just rub it in. So really indirect mark making is where I'm going. Your last show, the paintings tended to be quite large, and these are a much more modest scale. I thought at the time that it would be nice to have a cohesive size-wise in terms of a show. So the 24 by 24s, there's about eight or nine of them here. Now moving forward, I think it's going to be interesting to see these images big. So they may be going bigger. And they're very atmospheric. Things sort of dissolve into one another. There's a, a sense of air and space around them.
In this body of work, I was really interested in that. A lot of my other work has been somewhat flat, so this was kind of fun to create this mysterious space. I spy uh, Tremaine Smith, very good artist. Let's see if we can get her to badmouth Lisa a little bit. Okay, Tremaine, dump on Lisa. <laughs> oh, well, I think the work's actually stunning. New direction. What I'm seeing is a lot of luminosity. The light shining through when she scrapes away what's underneath. My metaphor for that is light from within. What do you think about that, Lisa? <laughs> I think you just got dissed. I think that's a nice quote. I might have to use it. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, my attempts to stir things up aren't working. Oh, well. Lisa recently exhibited work from the 1980s and was struck by the similarity between a painting called Light with a new one that she completed for this current show. There's a 30-year gap very, very similar painting. So I see that the work circles around in a spiral and you revisit your imagery, you revisit your history, your own history. It's so luminous, the light coming out of that dark blue background. Did you paint the light on top of the dark or leave it light and paint the dark around it? I follow my own rule. I always lay down light first. It's just my own sense of knowing that I'm going to be painting over and I want the light to come from within the painting itself. I create a lot of layers and I put it on and I take it off and I scrape. So it's an additive, reductive process. How long do they take? You know, I tell my students, and I guess this is what happens with me, is that things need to percolate. So they've been percolating since the last show. <laughs> Two years, yeah. Damn fine cup of coffee, Lisa. <laughs> Thanks. What else do you want me to say? <laughs> I want you to say a hello. I'm the great Lisa Preston. No, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> all right, all right, all right.